دل پتا منا باندھ را غلیم پزڑ گیا اولا اولا اجران سے زلیم This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Mimi Goodman. Well, President Obama followed up his trip to Saudi Arabia and Egypt with a visit to the Buchenwald concentration camp in Germany Friday, where 56,000 people were killed during World War II. Obama invoked his great uncle, who'd helped liberate a Buchenwald prison camp and returned a haunted man here at home. He also strongly criticized anyone who denies the Holocaust and said Buchenwald, quote, teaches us that we must be ever vigilant about the spread of evil in our own time. Well, Israeli journalist Amira Haas, a columnist for Haaretz newspaper in Israel, comes from a family of Holocaust survivors. Her mother, Hannah Levy Haas, survived the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. Amira edited her mother's diary from that time. It's being published now by Haymarket Books. It's called Diary of Bergen-Belsen, 1944-45. I asked Amira Haas last week about her mother's experience in Bergen-Belsen and the significance of how the Holocaust is remembered today. Maybe one of the lessons, I mean, the, one of the main things, and it's not a, what I learned from her, that life is not sacred in all circumstances. That's, uh, that very often she wondered in the concentration camp, uh, how come people stick to life even when it is so humiliating? And this is... Uh, <laughs> uh, this is... Um, and nevertheless, she, I mean, she, she remained alive by accident, like many others. It's not that she had a great desire to live at a certain moment. Um, but How she did survived. How she end up in bergen she, is from, she was from Yugoslavia, then she was, uh, she wanted to join the partisans, but the Jews in the community, the Jewish community were, was afraid, it was in 43. Uh, just after uh, the people were afraid that if she joins the partisans, the Germans would take revenge of the whole entire community. It was a few dozen, dozens, and they asked her not to join the partisans. So she had to make a choice, even though she knew that anyway the Germans would kill. Every, I mean, that the aim was to kill everybody. By not, by '43, everybody knew. Then she joined the. Then she was uh, detained like the rest of them in some Gestapo prison in Yugoslavia, and then they were supposed to be murdered, you know, this uh, assembly line of murder that the Germans built in Europe. So their turn came to be murdered, but then something didn't work out in the bureaucracy, and their bureaucracy, and they had to ship them to, they decided to ship them all the way to Bergen-Belsen. And where was Bergen-Belsen? Bergen-Belsen is in the north, uh, north of uh, Germany. And there she spent uh, seven or eight months and she wrote a diary, which was, of course, an illegal act. She also had a little school for children in her barrack, which was also an illegal act. Uh, and how did she do both? How did she hide the diary? Uh, she had friends. She found... Uh, 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 there were people, that's what I understood from her, and I think also here it's written that people were... Women at the barrack were always watching around to make sure that no, no capo or no... Uh, uh, no spy or no, nobody suspicious see her writing. Uh, so this was with the knowledge and cooperation and assistance of friends of hers. And why did she think it was so important to write? Uh, I think at first she wanted to, to unload a bit, to, to feel human. I think that's, uh, that's what she wanted to do. It was, but it was also natural for her to, to write. To write. Uh, she was a, a person of words and of expressing herself. And then, and that's what I write in, in my afterward, it's only after Begin Belsen that she became silent, actually. She was very verbal before, I mean, and in writing. And after Begin Belsen, and this is something I realized after her death, uh, she didn't talk much. I always thought she talked much. She told me much about the Holocaust. Now I realize she told very little. And also after, the, after Begin Belsen, she, she did not engage in writing, even though she was talented. And I, I try to explain this or to answer this riddle in my afterword. How do you answer the riddle? Maybe she lost hope. She had, still in Bergen-Belsen, she had hope for a different world, for a better world. And after Bergen-Belsen, more so with the years and in Israel, 
And you know, she told me a few years before she died, and uh, she told me all my worlds have were destroyed. And she meant world, the Jewish world in the diaspora, because she was a strong. She wanted to live in the diaspora. She didn't. She was not a Zionist. So this one was destroyed with the Nazi or the Nazi German industry of murder. That's that's how I term the Holocaust. The Holocaust is an incorrect term. What uh, do you mean? The Holocaust is as if something came out from the sky, from heaven, some a disaster, a calamity, a, 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 a nature calamity, and not human-made calamity. And uh, so and this so was you call it the uh, German industry of murder, or the assembly line of murder. The second world that was destroyed was of socialism. She was a socialist, a communist, and uh, very soon she saw that the socialist world was not uh, uh, what she meant it to be, what she thought socialism should be. Then, of course, Israel. Even though she was not a Zionist, she came to Israel as a refuge. But then, living through Israeli uh, uh, oppression of the Palestinians uh, was also one sort of destruction. And then the destruction or the decomposition of Yugoslavia that she loved so much. So um, I think the disillusionment made her mute in her late years. How the Holocaust is used today? Uh, President Obama going to Saudi Arabia, then Egypt, then he'll go to Buchenwald, to the concentration camp. Your thoughts on this? I think it's very important uh, to uh, remember the fight of the world against this uh, industry of murder and the philosophy of the, of the super race or the uh, supermen or the... the um, Herren, the Aaron. master, the master, the master that that Hitler Germany uh, tried to impose over the, the entire world. Race. Yeah, master race. Yes, it's very important. It's six. It's more than sixty years. It looks like uh, the past, the distant past, but it is not. Uh, the, but the problem is that it has been used as if it is the only uh, that. The only victims were the Jews, that the only target were the Jews, and that it's the first time in human history that you have such racist philosophy trying to impose itself over the entire world. Um, the problem is when you start to, to make competition of victimhood. Oh, we are more victims than you, that's why we are forgiven about everything. This is the problem. But let us not fall into the trap and think because Israel abuses the Holocaust and very often makes use, use of it in order to justify the repression and oppression of the Palestinians, let us not fall into the trap and think that one should not uh, uh, assess the, the, the Nazi threat as it really was. And it was a huge threat to the entire, uh, 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 to entire humankind. And I think that's why I appreciate when he goes to Buchen Buchenwald, I think that beyond the propaganda or some, that every act has, it has uh, uh, important content. Um, the, what was, we often ask ourselves what was different. I mean, human, uh, the West, the Christian West, the Christian white West is responsible for the, to the murder of uh, Millions and millions of people already before the, the 40s, the 30s and the 40s. Colonialism, slavery, it's not new. Uh, the conquest of the Americas, all, all this. What still we have to remember that there was something peculiar about the, 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 the murder during the Nazi times, is that it was so organized. It was not a by... Death and murder were not byproduct of a lucrative expedition, but turned into a goal, turned into the main product. This, this is the difference uh, from the point of view of the 
of the culprit, of the perpetrator, not from the point of view of the victim. Because a slave or, or a, 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 who was uh, tortured by hard labor until death, uh, the suffering is, uh, I mean, there is no way to measure suffering and injustice. So when we do this, it's in order to understand. When we diagnose an, an illness, it is in order to find a remedy. It's not in order to compare, oh, you, are, you suffer more and, and you suffer less.